Hey, what's up everybody? I am the Gerbil. It is September the 27th. I am a few days late for my user viewer question segment. I apologize. Life gets in the way. And if you know anything about my channel, you know I publish when I can, not on a set schedule as much as I wish. Anyway, hey folks, uh, Datacron set 11 dropped. I've got a first question about that regarding Admiral Akbar, uh, his Omicron and Datacrons. I think that's going to be, that's going to be the first question I'm going to talk about, and it's going to be a real doozy. And I feel bad for anyone who runs across an, a properly datacron omicron at modded Akbar trio in the upcoming 3v3. It is going to be insane. Absolutely insane. Let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So the first question comes to us from Mole Eliza, one of the most common names in the galaxy. There's like thousands of them. Anyway, hey, Mole says, Akbar will get a datacron. Do you know what the best Akbar squad in defense? And to make a long story short, okay, hang on, I'm going to try to do this one in depth. Now, to, to understand the Akbar trio, you got to first understand that even in 5v5, Akbar probably works best in a team of three, like 3v5. Why? So Leia's Omicron says that um, whenever Leia attacks, there's a 55% chance to grant all rebel allies retribution for two turns. So they're going to gain a buff retribution. A 55% chance to grant all allies tenacity up, which is amazing because then you can't get debuffed. And then um, all other rebels gain 5% health and protection. Now, you got to understand that in 3v3, Leia should be assisting almost every single turn, and she should be attacking, if you're lucky, three times. Like, there's, I don't remember what it is, but there's a high probability she will attack a second and then a third time. So, multiple attacks every single turn, it's fair to say Retribution and Tenacity will be up almost the entire battle. Now, the uh, Akbar leadership Omicron says that uh, whenever an ally uses a special ability, a random rebel ally attacks, but the Omicron, instead of making it a random ally, the, re um, the two other weakest allies are called to assist. Now in five, you can't control necessarily who that is because people's life you know, values change as they take damage. So you lose control. But in three, in a team of three, you're guaranteeing the other two assist. So I've got three squads down here. You can see I, I call them race them, stun them, and slam them. The race them is absolutely a turn meter domination team. You put uh, Stormtrooper Han in there. Akbar gains turn meter on his basic. He assists every turn, basically. Stormtrooper Han removes enemy turn meter while giving his whole team turn meter. And when he assists with his basic, he also has a high percentage chance of gaining turn meter. So this one is going to outrun most enemy squads. The stun them is going to utilize the persistent assisting from R2-D2 to stun all of the enemies on their basic. Uh, so Leia goes into stealth, you stun the target. Akbar uses a special, you stun the target. Uh, R2 does a whatever, hopefully Akbar's gained more turn meter to go again through his basic. He uses his other special, you stun the third person and rinse and repeat. The slam them is taking out R2 and Order Trooper and putting in Fulcrum who absorbs all the these buffs that are coming from Leia and stealing them from the enemy and then doing some really, really big hits. I really, really though recommend Stormtrooper Han. Now, why this is just nuts. The level nine Akbar says whenever an ally attacks during, I'm guessing that's going to be Akbar's turn. Uh, Akbar and that ally will gain 25% turn meter. <laughs> so this basically means every time Akbar gets a turn and he's going to get a lot of them, and I mean a lot, especially under Stormtrooper Han, he's gonna give himself and that assisting ally 25% turn meter. Well, you know who that is, that's both Han and Leia, so because they're both attacking. So basically every time Akbar gets a turn, the whole team is going to gain 25% turn meter if I'm reading this right. And and I could be reading it wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that, that uh, parenthesis O is what that means in their placeholder. This comes, I scraped this right off at, uh, as, as Capital Games forum post. Um, now the level, so there's going to be a lot of turn meter gain. Now the level six there says, at the start of each turn, if a non-galactic legend Akbar allies have 50% or more turn meter, they, the damage they receive is gonna be reduced by 75%. Now we've seen this, the most recent set I think has this for Wookiees. I think that under Akbar, again, this is going to be insane with that level nine Datacron because that, they're basically always going to have high turn meter. The very moment 
that they don't take a turn, they're probably already sitting on 65, 70, 80% turn meter ready to go again. So I envision in this lineup, if you're if you're modded to go first with a super fast Princess Leia and, and Stormtrooper Han gets a turn and starts stripping enemies, whatever, when your turn meter train runs out, your team is gonna be almost invincible taking 75% reduced damage. Now, on top of this, the level three that I recommend is whenever allies gain tenacity up, Princess Leia, every time pew pew, they gain 10% stacking protection up. And she's gonna be assisting every turn, hopefully triple shotting every turn with a 55% chance to grant tenacity up. So every turn you have three chances to gain 10% stacking up, a protection up. This is gonna be so thick. Imagine all that protection stacking and then taking 75% reduced damage. Holy moly, folks. Now, there are, of course, some other Datacron options. I'm breaking them down here. Fundamentally, the three I'm marking, no, I just, just no, do not use those. The others have some advantages, but I think the stacking offense with the, the, um, the, the reduced damage with level nine is going to be potentially broken. I mean, I can absolutely see instances where the enemy team does not get a turn at all. Like, even if it timed out, it could be gross. Maybe not that broken, but it's broken. So, like, the ones I marked, no, they, they, they just break your synergies. Like, the, the level 6, the middle one, whenever um, uh, rebel allies damage an enemy with an ability they grant tenacity up, you don't need that because Leia's already doing that on her basic. Uh, the one above that says whenever rebel allies start their turn with fewer than two buffs, um, they're going to constantly gain buffs, especially under Stormtrooper Han. I mean, R2 could give him stealth, Leia's going to give him retribution, uh, tenacity up. You're going to have lots of buffs. So that one is just simply not going to work if you're using Stormtrooper Han or R2. Now, Ahsoka, she's going to want to steal and siphon and, and copy buffs, so she's going to have a lot of buffs. So like that one could potentially work, making the turn meter more broken, but it really depends how you run this team. I don't think it's going to work with my recommended characters, but... Hmm, I don't know. Give it a shot. Got to move on. That was in depth. Boys and girls, this is going to be a nasty, nasty, nasty 3v3 team if it's done right by your opponents or you. Check it out. Next question comes to us from Gearhead24501. I wonder what that 501 stands for. Never. That's an odd number for Star Wars. Give up Jabba for Leia. I'm struggling. Analysis. Paralysis. No, stay the course, buddy. Stay on target. Stay on target. Jabba. Why Jabba? Because Leia's kit has four marquees, two of which are still not even farmable. And and Gearhead, you have them all at level one. Looks like they're all like four stars, three, four, five stars, maybe under four stars. Conversely, you're really close to Jabba the Hutt and Mob Enforcer, Gamorrean Guard, and, and are so easy to gear like you could probably just complete uh, a crate raid or whatever you're doing just dump all that that one or two back-to-back -back raid currency into those characters and have them all three at gear 12 like that i mean those are easy and java despite leia being you know the cream of the crop right now Jabba is going to give you access to so many awesome things. First off, he's amazing in Conquest. Secondly, you get Smuggler's Run 2, which is the very best non-guild event, I think, in the game in terms of reward, because it allows you to take two mods and immediately throw them up to six dot mods and then re-roll uh, two stats, I think, on each of them. I could be wrong, I don't remember. And then you get those those Acumancers, whatever they are. Um, not to re-roll, but to roll additional stats. And then the, the Acumancers, whatever they are, allow you to re-roll. You get like 80 of those, which allow you to, to re-roll uh, five at, of the first level attempts all the way up to two of the, the third level attempts. And you do that every 11 to 14 days, and your mod quality goes through the roof. And remember, mods are the only thing that make your characters different than your opponent's characters. So Java is still, I think highly effective, highly essential, and, and just fundamentally at this moment, well, Leia's in the game now, the best GL in the game 
with Leia still yet to be determined if she's going to dethrone that. So yeah, stay on target, bro. Stay on target, finish up Jabba, and then move on. And by the time you finish your Jabba, these marquees will all be available to farm. And if you're lucky, maybe one of them will be accelerated, but I doubt it because that's going to take at least eight months. And you, th I think you should be able to finish that Jabba right there in three to four months, depending on your, your guild support. Uh, moving on, we got uh, four gas. How do you feel about swapping out Cassian for Wedge on my Repel fleet bench? No. So Cassian is truly the un unsung hero of the Rebel fleet. If you're not running Raven's Claw especially, and you're opening up with like Biston Biggs and, and Hans William Falcon, 99.9% .9 of the time Cassian should be your first reinforcement. When he comes into the board, he clears off all enemy deep uh, buffs. He gives you a targeted cleanse or a targeted assist, both of them guaranteed 100% critical chance, I think, with like 50% critical chance damage up under Akbar. That gives both of your ships um, uh, protection up from Akbar, etc., etc., etc. It's a kill shot, usually. You come in and, and the enemy tank loses their taunt, and you just so like, hey, Kylo, die, or whatever the threat is, right? Wedge enters the battlefield and he does something. Like, usually he becomes a target and dies. He, he, he just doesn't, I'm sorry, he just doesn't do much. It's not worth it. Even though Wedge is way easier to gear than two pilots, I think Cassian is just two pilots, I haven't looked. But seriously, they're way, way better. And then when you go for your Adrad team to support your Profundity farm, then you've already got Cassian and K2 going to rock out that team. Whereas Wedge still doesn't do anything. Except he did just get a Datacron, so maybe. We'll see where that goes. Tales of Godlar. Hey, Gerbil. I fancy doing a little free-to-play Inquisitor Rush account to get into a top-tier guild early. What would your recommendations on squads be aside from the Inquisitors to get that farm? Um, Nooch has pretty much sold me. I do not like bugs, but I think if you are especially free-to-play, semi-early, early game... Bugs are fabulous. Of course, they, they, the ships are easy to farm, very, very easy to get the whole squad up and running. And then you unlock Tarkin and you get the Zeta weekly event to start collecting Zetas uh, three days a week. You must get that. I mean, that's six free Zetas every single week, I think. Must get that. It also gives you a GAC defensive fleet ready to go. And I do say defense. I don't think it's a solid offense. But that's my humble opinion. Humble opinion, folks. Don't don't crush me for having an opinion, please. Uh, now, you said you're going for Inquisitors, so farm those from the get-go. They'll lead you to GI, who will get you into a better guild if you are Reva ready. Now, on the along the way, uh, I kind of put a tie for two other teams. Uh, Imperial Troopers, and down below, I've got Palpatine Vader. Why? Because Palpatine Vader are just like the de facto go-to dark side beginning teams. They are really, really good uh, in so many places in the game and you will still use them all the way up until like 13 million GP. You'll still use them, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. And as you are developing your dark side teams, especially those Inquisitors, you can farm pretty quickly uh, fifth brother, ninth sister, seventh sister, and you have a wonderful, wonderful arena or, or conquest squad right there. And if you if you go for the Imperial Troopers, you're going to, of course, unlock uh, an assault battle for Imperial Troopers or Bounty Hunters, I think it is, but the Troopers do it way better. It's just an amazing offensive team. It's pretty easy to farm, and it helps you get you going for Executor down the road with Piet. And then, again, you can go uh, Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader, Gideon, Piet, and Range Trooper is my recommendation from that squad and again it is a really 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 solid offensive team now at the same time i say bounty hunters bounty hunters bounty hunters bounty hunters i think bounty hunters no matter what should be any new game focus because bounty hunters are going to be used for so many things from credit heist to smuggler no not smugglers John, but credit heist um uh, assault battles uh, executor which sh should be like your, probably your your first GL ship and then of course they get you into the CLS squad by unlocking Chewie and the Hans William Falcon so there you go that would unequivocally be my dark side free to play farming path if you're not absolutely wacky and want to go CLS Radus and Mon Motham like I did Okay, next question. Hey, the gerbil, are you planning to do more videos on your hyperdrive account to show more often the progress and also what is currently my big goal on the account? Oh, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, 
Jawas and gerbils and Ewoks. I wish I had time. I do. Like I said at the start of this video, I publish when I get time. Um, I will be on a break for the next 10 days from work. So happy me. And I do hope to publish a, a bunch of videos during this time. But um, I'm, an, I'm an incredibly per busy person. I take work very, very seriously. Um, and I'm very dedicated to family, which is why it's always nighttime pretty much when I film. Because I wait for my little one to go to sleep usually. Um, and uh, then I try to, you know, crunch through. But yeah, I would love to. And I will put that more on my radar. You are like the 20,000th person to ask. So I will... <laughs> I will try to lift that up on my priority list, sincerely, but thanks for asking. Next question, it's a Wampa one. Uh, no, it's not, I lied. This one is really, really long. So this was posted in my um, in my Discord, of course, where all these questions come from. If you wanna get a question in there and would like to see my thoughts on it, please post it and I will try to get to it as soon as I can. So it's a long one, I'm not gonna read it all. Basically, um, this comes from Narrows, who's outlined their farming path and basically, I agree with everything you have said in there for the most part. I think it is all very viable, very fun. It looks awesome. My one advice to you is do not spread yourself too thin. This game is measured in months or years in terms of accomplishment. And so when you're working on like five, six, seven different teams all at once, it's very, very easy to sit back three months later and evaluate what you've achieved and feel like nothing has happened because you've sprinkled some gear here and some gear there and some gear here. I highly recommend you focus on a path towards specific end goals, um, not in game goals, but a specific goal that is achievable within maybe a four to six month time period. And you kind of work backwards from there. Like I want Leia. Therefore, I will work on my Ewok squad and then my CLS squad or vice versa. Or maybe I want, uh, I need a new fleet and I need a GL. So Slicker is highly effective at that. You get the finalizer fleet and you get the, the GL fleet, uh, uh, Galact uh, Slicker team, which is wholly encompass, uh, including the, the requirements for it, right? So if you focus narrowly like that, then it's really, really easy to feel progress weekly, monthly as you're achieving. And I'm just looking at like this list on the left. It says like, I'm building towards 10 squads for 5v5, three fleets for, yeah, that's great. And the reality is we're all doing that. But if you do it all at the same time, you will get nowhere very, very, very slow. Yeah, but I do like your strategy. Um, message me if you want more direct answers on this stuff. Hey, Knights of Knee. I like it. Already have Poplu and Lawgrave for Rise of the Empire. We'll be getting Tebow soon. We'll follow into Leia, which is going to give you uh, Nisa, Chirpa, Wicket. So you've got six Ewoks right there. Um, and if all goes well, you'll have that in October. What do I recommend Ewok wise for 5v5? 5v5, oh my goodness. They are a astonishing in 5v5. I, I guess my reputation has preceded me. These are some recent 5v5 battles. Notice what people attacked my Ewoks with. Reva, Relic 9 Darth Mal uh, Revan, and Jedi Master Luke. And I got I got a, a recent comment from my GSC opponent there. It said those Ewoks almost timed out Jedi Master Luke squad. If I didn't have Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, the team would have timed out. Seriously. They are, they are wacky, wacky good. Now in 3v3, it, there's a million different ways that you can arrange these, especially with the upcoming Datacron. The Nisacron is gonna make them stupidly good, I think. Um, I mean, I really, really, really think that they're gonna time out teams right and left in, in GAC if you put them on defense. Uh, the Chirpacron looks pretty good. The Wicketcron looks okay. The Lograycron is like a no. Um, I will be putting out some more data. Uh, I definitely will put putting out a video on this very soon, but um, Yeah, take a screenshot There are so many different 3v3 iterations, but right now I Sincerely believe your best bet for 5v5 is sitting right there All right, got to move on C L C Prez. No, no, sorry. This is autumn heart. I love you autumn I'm currently farming Executor, but after that, I'm at a loss as to which fleet to farm. Also knowing how to farm the ship Omegas more efficiently. Oh, I oh, I don't think it's Omega. I was really wondering what that is, but the ship abilities. 
Uh, materials. Uh, those are just a pain. I really don't have a good answer for that. I'd have to do some research. I apologize. But which fleet to go next oh, sincerely depends on your roster and your GL goals. Like, seriously, if you don't have a GL, I would say go, go Slicker. Slicker is relatively easy to farm, and you're going to get the entire finalizer crew in there. Uh, you get you get the GL, and you get two different GAC teams. You get the Slicker team, and you get the Phasma team for Territory War. So your guild will appreciate that for you, especially if you put that Omicron on her. Um, other than that, it depends really on where you're going. Now, spoiler ahead, I do sincerely think that the next Galactic Legend status ship next summer is going to be... Galactic Republic. And I have a lot more to say about that later. Um, but I think that if you don't have Negotiator, definitely consider Negotiator because I think that that's going to be incredibly important going into 2024. Uh, and um, I, I think, like, you know, fleets like Radis is very much tied to Ray. Thrawn and Tarkin are, are very, very, very interchangeable. It depends very much on your Empire uh, roster. Um, I, I would not go for a Leviathan unless you just are absolutely dead set on it. It's, it's still kind of in flux as to how good it is at the moment, I think. And, um, I mean, it's, it's an amazing ship and fleet, don't get me wrong, but it's boring to play. I'm not going to lie about that. It's super boring. Um, and it's got two Relic 9 characters, which is really, really hard to farm. So, like... I would say go Slicker or Negotiator or Profundity and start off with just a totally solid home one, build that into Profundity. But those would be my three. Negotiator, Profundity, or Finalizer. Of course, Malevolence is amazing on offense too. Again, look, look at your roster and see where you got the most pilots already geared up. That's probably where I'd head. All right, this one comes to us from CLC Prez. Uh, seen a lot of conflicting opinions on the fourth and fifth members for Imperial Troopers. That's because they are so diverse the, the 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 standard three i think is going to be uh veers lead dark trooper and piet now beyond that you really really can mix and match most imperial troopers in there and do a lot of amazing great things i would take some time jump over to swagga.gg look at the the gac tab there's they've got an option that says who to attack choose general veers as the lead and then i would scroll through the list and be like looking for teams you commonly come across in GAC. If you frequently run against Geos, then I would probably recommend adding in Giet, uh, Piet, Gideon in there. I said Giet, Gideon in there. Um, but you know, if if not, then you might look at some other team compositions, right? Like if you if you if every single GAC at your level, you're seeing Night Sisters, and you're you're wondering like, how do I beat Mare and Night Sisters? Well, you know, this is not a good team to choose, uh, and it doesn't really make a difference. So find the characters that you can plug and play into other squads. But I think you can probably identify the threats that these guys can handle the best then I would look at your gear level of all your characters decide how much you really want to invest in them my personal go-to is um, is is the top five you see there not with Colonel Stark my per my recommendation would be Veers Gideon Piet Dark and Shore Trooper but that's my opinion I love them had great success with them next up we got Wolf Pack 104 what's the Zeta order on Adrad and is the team useful with the Omicron even without Zetas um, and, and you say Arnold recommends inspiring maneuver first. I wholly concur with that. Inspiring uh, maneuver is, I think, the important one. Radis should basically open up the the game. You might have Jen faster, but Radis first move. Uh, in almost any game mode should be inspiring maneuver, which is going to do a whole bunch of shenanigans for your team and get the game going, hopefully setting you up for a, an easy victory. But as I was building this, I was like, hold up, why do you have an Omicron without Zetas? And I'm not judging. I'm not. I'm just, I was really taken back by that because Omicrons are hard to get. They're precious. Precious. But Zetas are actually not. You should be able to land... 20 to 50 Zeta mats a month, depending on your level in the game. Whereas Omicrons, goodness gracious, those you might be lucky to get 10 a month uh, if you don't have the right rosters for Galactic Challenges and you're not, I mean, if you're not buying the Conquest packs, you might seriously be only getting four to eight of those a month. But Zetas come and go all over the place. So it really confuses me. To me, if you're going to invest an Omicron into a character, especially one as good as Admiratus, 
the only answer to this question is you need both Zetas. Go ahead and put them on. You will not regret it. Hope that helps. Okay, next question comes to us from Neros. I'm still early game. Any uh, are, are any of the resources and events worth going out of my way to build teams for, thinking mostly of the cargo ships and smugglers run for the, um, yep, that's a good one. I would say smugglers, bounty hunters, imperial troopers. Th that's not really going out of your way. Those are three teams that, as I open this video with, I highly recommend you get almost no matter what, because smugglers give you access, obviously, to the to the the ship event. They give you access to the credit heist. Bounty hunters give you access to the legendary epic event where you get like Infus Nest, uh, some crystals and other shards for characters, Imperial troopers and whatnot. Um, Wampa even, and then Imperial troopers and bounty hunters will. Both, no, no, or Inquisitors, who I think Inquisitors are there. I think you just need Inquisitors, um, and it takes forever to get GI, I know, but once you get Grand Inquisitor, it's amazing. But be Inquisitors and Imperial Troopers both have direct access to two assault battles. The uh, Rebel Assault Battle, I think it's the, the one called Military Might, is probably the very easiest to beat the Challenge Tier 3. I have a great video on that. You can do it in four minutes with relatively low gear. Rebels and CLS Squad is, is still one of the absolute best offensive squads in the game, bar none, all the way up to Kyber 2 probably. Um, maybe not, I don't know, but it's, it's sincerely one of the best. And then of course, I would say support your guild. Um, Bounty Hunters early mid game are still awesome guild teams. Uh, if you're going for first order, get that Omicron on Phasma to help support in the territory wars. If your guild is looking at doing like the light side, dark side geo battles for a while, help farm those characters, get your Geonosians up to get Wat Tambor, etc. But out of your way, the only two I can really stress is get at least a couple of these assault battles up to challenge tier one or two so you can start getting the relic materials and absolutely get your smuggler, bounty hunters, or whatever they are up for the credit heist. Credits are so valuable. Even I am, I'm Kyber one, Kyber two, sorry, I'm Kyber two. I keep a bank of about 40 million credits, but I wish I had triple the income because I start buying mods in the store and the bank account drops and everybody should be buying mods if you can afford it. Seriously, it's worth it in the long run. Okay, only two questions left. Back to four gas. My current fleet area is dominated with eight whales that have executor already, despite the fact that I only have one and a half million GP. Yep, that sucks. I feel you though. What would you recommend is the best way to determine what time of the day I should reset my fleet arena so I can get in a less competitive time slot? Seriously, um, rather than you can you can like watch and make a, a, a data table of when everybody's bumping and attacking and moving. Um, but basically, it comes down to this: Does your fleet have a Discord? Reach out and ask, you know, eight or nine people in game if there is one, if you can get into it. Um, many fleets do have a Discord and then they, they post their time so that their payout times so that they can collectively ensure everybody is reaping the benefits and, and just to make life easier so we're not all doing four or five battles a day. It really is just about helping a friend. So the answer is if they have one, join it. If they don't, start one. So how do you find people if you can't message them in game? Well, you know, write down their ally code, Google it, write down their name, find out what guild they're in by clicking on their profile. Google their guild, find their guild page in SWGOH.GG, find them, uh, and then send them an ally invite request, um, ally code invite, whatever. And, and it's not too hard. It's a little time consuming, but yeah, find their Discord, get in. Good luck, man. Good luck. Um, how to mod Wampa? Health and tenacity, 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 health and tenacity. Health and tenacity. Health and tenacity. Seriously, you don't need offense. You do not need offense. His offense increases 40% stacking with every roar, and he will roar a lot. Before you know it, he's hitting at, at even, like, no offense, secondaries even. He can start hitting for 50, 60, 80, 100, 150,000 damage by the end of the match. Most matches where you wampa, you really just go in, you do the ground pound, get the protection up, and then you hit automatic and kick back and watch to make sure he doesn't get in danger. That's it. 
That's really it. Health and tenacity. Uh, last question, Gerbil from Chronocast. Hey, Chronocast. Um, Chronocast super active in my Discord. Have you thought about doing some roster reviews? Would be fun to get your take on the account growth and gaps worth shoring up. So, you know, I really have. I like, I really, really like um, how Nooch Too Good does a bunch of roster reviews on his channel. The The reason I haven't opened it up is one, I don't really want to step onto his, his like, YouTube thing. I mean, that's what he really does a lot of. Um, secondly, he and I are, are friends. And again, I don't want to encroach on that. But primarily, really, um, it's a kind of a big time commitment. And I already don't have much time and really, really limited, sadly. So um, it's something I'll, I'll consider for sure, because I think I think like a roster review, pick five, ten people randomly or something and, you know, spend an hour and sit there and go through it, I think would be kind of fun. But I really, really couldn't do that very often. It would really be a once in a while kind of thing. But um, I'll think about it. Seriously, thanks for the question. Anyway, folks, it's been a half hour. I'm hot. I'm sweaty. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you're still here, hit that like, hit that sub, please. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll catch you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.